Hi everyone, my name is Damian Marucci. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon as well as being a craniofacial surgeon in Sydney, Australia. Today, I would like to talk about a condition called craniosynostosis. Craniosynostosis is a condition where the bones of the skull fuse early. So first, let's just talk about the normal anatomy of the skull. Your skull bones can be divided into two groups. There are the facial bones, and then you've got your cranial vault, which are the bones that surround and protect the brain. So we're mainly talking today about the cranial vault. Here I have a model skull. So you can see that the skull bones, the cranial vault, is made up of a number of bony panels. These are called the calvarial bones. And they're named for the lobes of the brain underneath. So there's a frontal bone, there are two parietal bones, an occipital bone, and a temporal bone. The joints are called sutures. That's where the two bones touch each other. And so the sutures also have names. There is a sagittal suture going down the middle, a coronal suture on either side between the parietal bone and the frontal bone, and then a lambdoid suture between the occipital bone and the parietal bone. Now, those sutures are fibrous joints. They allow a little bit of movement so that uh, as the head is going through the birth canal, there can be a little bit of movement between the bones. They also are the site where the bone grows, where the skull gets larger. So your brain rapidly increases in size in the first few years of life. And while it's rapidly increasing in size, a new bone is formed at these sutures. So even though the brain is getting bigger, the bones over the top are also getting bigger, but in a way that keeps the brain constantly protected from outside trauma. These sutures normally remain open throughout life, basically into adulthood. However, for some children, for some reason, and the overwhelming majority of time, we don't know why, the bones of the skull confuse early. So, the fusion of these bones of the skull, the early fusion, that's called craniosynostosis. So craniosynostosis can have two types of effects. The first thing is it can affect the way the brain can grow. It can affect the head shape. The second thing is it can actually affect the brain itself. It can put pressure on the brain. So cosmetically, it can affect the head shape and then functionally, potentially can it affect the brain itself. There are different patterns of craniosynostosis. The most common type of craniosynostosis is where the sagittal suture, the suture down the middle, has fused. So when this suture has fused, these two bones can't grow side to side. So instead, the head can only grow forward and back. And as a result, the child ends up with a long, narrow head, which is called scaphocephaly. So sagittal synostosis can cause scaphocephaly. The next most common type of craniosynostosis, which we see in our clinic, is where there is an abnormal fusion in the very front of the forehead. So your frontal bone, your forehead bone, actually starts out as two bones, and there is normally a suture between the two which is called the metopic suture. It's normally fused by about nine months of age. But in some babies, it actually fuses even earlier. And as a result, the children are born with a triangular shaped forehead, which is called trigonocephaly. So the main features of trigonocephaly, in addition to having a triangular forehead, the eyes tend to be a little bit closer together. It can also affect the shape of the eyes when you look at them on an x-ray or CT scan. The next most common type of craniosynostosis we see is where one of these sutures on the side has fused. This is called the coronal suture between the parietal bone and the frontal bone. When one of these sutures has fused, it gives you an asymmetrical uh, head shape where one side of the head is different to the other side of the head. So on the side that's fused, the forehead doesn't grow as far forward, and instead the other side of the forehead grows more. It also affects the shape of the eye on the side that's fused. It looks more open than the other side. It can also affect the shape of the nose. 
with the root of the nose, the very top part of the nose, tending to deviate and point to the side where the fusion is. So overall, you get a facial asymmetry where one side of the face and head are different to the other side of the face and head. Sometimes both coronal sutures can be fused. That's called bicoronal craniosynostosis. That does result in a symmetrical head shape, but because these bones are fused on both sides, the head can't grow forward and back. So you end up with a short head when you look from the side. And with ongoing growth, the head can grow up because it can't grow forward and back. And that's called brachycephaly. The rarest type of craniosynostosis is the fusion of the lambdoid suture. You can't really see the lambdoid suture in this model because you've got this block here at the back. The lambdoid suture is between your occipital bone at the back and the parietal bone just in front of it here. When that fuses early, it can give flatness on one side or the other side of the back of the head. That is incredibly uncommon. It can result in a difference in the ears, both when you look at them from in front, one ear may be at a slightly different level to the other ear, and also when you look from above, one ear will be slightly in front of the other ear. Lambdoid synostosis, causing flatness of the back of the head, is very rare. However, we see many children in the craniofacial clinic who have flatness of the back of the head, which is just due to positional molding, called positional plagiocephaly. The lambdoid craniosynostosis needs an operation, whereas positional plagiocephaly or positional molding does not. Well, I hope you have gotten some information out of this brief overview of craniosynostosis. I hope to do future videos uh, looking at other craniofacial conditions such as positional plagiocephaly. Thank you very much for listening.